In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the effects that testosterone has on your mindset, okay? Because we already know the effects that it has on our body. It makes us more lean, it makes us more muscular, but the effects on the mind, on the brain are not as established. And in this video, like I said, I'll be sharing with you five scientifically proven ways that testosterone affects your brain and your mind and your behavior as a result of it okay now just before diving into the video just to be clear that testosterone is not the end all be all we have to distinguish between causation and correlation okay sometimes two factors can be correlated but they are not exactly causing each other in the same way that we would expect okay so sometimes we are engaging in behavior to raise our testosterone levels but high testosterone is a natural byproduct of being a healthy person, of implementing the lifestyle changes, of embodying the mindsets that help us show up as the most capable versions of ourselves. Okay, so rather than trying to go for the pill or the injection or the supplement, it's about implementing the lifestyle changes and mindset shifts that allow us to experience higher levels of testosterone as a natural byproduct okay because so many guys are focused on the quick fix on just thinking that they just need high testosterone and then everything in their life will be fine but that is not the case okay we have to get to the root of the issue we have to fix what is going on underneath before we can experience the benefits that exist on top of it okay now the first benefit of having high testosterone is that of improved memory and cognition okay so they've done studies on this and they found that men with higher levels of testosterone score much better on tests of verbal and visual memory okay in another study they found that uh, men that were given testosterone injections ended up having better scores of verbal fluency as well now the exact mechanisms through which testosterone exerts this benefit is not entirely clear but there is some evidence pointing to the fact that testosterone exerts neuroprotective benefits on the brain okay so it protects the brain from oxidative stress and it protects the brain tissue from actually decaying okay now it's not a surprise that men with low levels of testosterone also have a higher incidence of Alzheimer's disease, which is basically a neurodegenerative disease, okay? And it's also the case that men with low levels of testosterone have symptoms such as brain fog, difficulty focusing, and just cloudy thinking as a result of it, okay? So of course, if you have high levels of testosterone, like I said, it's a natural byproduct of being healthy. And if you have the lifestyle practices in place that allow you to show up with vitality, with health, with mental clarity, then obviously high testosterone will factor into providing these neuroprotective benefits on your brain as well, okay? Now the second benefit that I have for you on how testosterone actually positively impacts your mindset is that it exerts and induces a positive outlook, okay? So they've done a meta-analysis study on this where they looked at a bunch of different studies. This is the most dense and comprehensive sort of study that researchers can do. And what they found is that uh, after looking at all of these studies, they distinguished that testosterone exerts a significant positive impact on mood, okay? And then with in other studies they've done, they found that men who are depressed when they're given testosterone injections end up experiencing an improvement in their mood as well. Again, now I want to encourage you that, okay, yes, we've done these studies. They found that when they give the injection, they are feeling better as a result of it. But many times when we're feeling low and we're feeling depressed, when we're feeling anxious, there is something underlying that, okay? There's something that needs to be addressed. And when that is addressed, then our positive emotions can flow as a natural byproduct of it, okay? Now, I'm sharing these studies with you because this correlation has been distinguished, but I am a firm believer in the natural process of testosterone optimization, okay? We all have a significant room for improvement. I'll link out to another video somewhere up here, but you have to focus on the natural route. You have to get to the what the cause behind you having low testosterone, the cause behind you being depressed, being low, being anxious before you go on to opt for the pill, the injection, the supplement to help stop feeling that way. Okay, that is the current conception that we have in Western medicine, whereby, you know, it's to cover up the symptom while completely ignoring the root cause. And that's great for acute symptoms. But if something's chronic, whereby it's happening again and again, where it's something that exists for the long term, then we really have to get to the root cause of what is 
you know, causing that so that we can fix the underlying issue rather than address the overlying symptoms. Okay, now the third way that testosterone affects your mindset is that it increases your appetite for risk. Okay, now they've run a bunch of different studies on this. One of the most comprehensive one was run on both men and women. They brought in more than a hundred test subjects for this. And what they found is that both the men and the women, they actually brought them into a gambling task. Okay, so they found that both the men and the women with higher levels of testosterone were more likely to engage in risk in that gambling task okay in another study they found that mba students with higher levels of testosterone actually had a higher incidence of choosing careers that were more risky and then this third study what they found is that financial traders their their uh, morning level of testosterone predicted their profits for the day okay the higher the level of testosterone was in the morning the more likely they were to have higher levels of profits later in the day okay now risk is something that we all have a relationship with whether you consider yourself someone who is risk averse or risk uh loving at the end of the day like if we want to grow if we want to expand if we want to become more than we are there is some avenue of risk that is involved involved in that okay we have to walk down the path of risk we have to go outside of what we are currently comfortable to experience who we can be on the other side of it okay as by its very definition growth can only occur outside of the comfort zone and if you are going through the motions of being comfortable all the time then you will hold your back you hold yourself back from experiencing who you have the potential to be and if you hold your back from hold yourself back from expressing who you are capable of being then in that gap between who you are and who you're capable of being in that gap is where we end up experiencing regret, disillusionment, anxiety, okay? As we strive to close that gap, as we take risks in our lives, that is when we can step into our real power and become who we are capable of being, okay? Now, the fourth way that testosterone affects your mindset is that it induces more dominant behavior, okay? So they found studies on this that men with higher levels of testosterone tend to engage in behaviors that are meant to enhance status over others, okay? Now, sometimes this can be uh, expressed aggressively, as is the case with prisoners. And this is why a lot of association between testosterone and aggression comes up, okay? People say that when you have high levels of testosterone, you are more aggressive. Now, again, you know, words are open to interpretation. Do you mean aggressive as in hindering someone else, as in bringing someone else down? Or do you mean aggressive as in like focused and, you know, dominant and uh, determined to re reach the goal, okay? Now, in the case with prisoners, it's about bringing other people down, about negatively affecting the people around you. But in another study on adolescent boys, they found something pretty interesting. They found that uh, the boys with the highest levels of testosterone were most considered socially dominant and confident amongst their peers. On the flip side, the men with the lowest levels, of the boys with the lowest levels of testosterone had the highest history of reported violence, okay? So this is interesting because the boys with the highest levels of testosterone had the least reported incidence of actually aggression in terms of exhibited to someone else, okay? So that's something that is interesting over there. And another interesting fact is that in primates, okay? So when a lesser male rises experiences a rise in status then he experiences a rise in testosterone as a result of it okay so even though he is the exact same animal as a result of his rising in his status he experiences this rise in testosterone levels as well okay so of course if you are making moves towards becoming more towards growing towards learning towards always you know moving in the direction of of growth then you will experience testosterone as a natural byproduct of that, okay? So it's a bi-directional relationship with all of these things. Yes, testosterone exerts positive benefits on your brain, but if you're taking care of your brain, then your testosterone levels will be high as well, okay? So it's like a circular relationship and it's not about focusing on one thing or the other. It's about focusing on, like I said, implementing the lifestyle practices, on taking care of yourself, on embodying the mindsets that allow you to show up in this most empowered sense rather than trying to, like I said, opt for the quick fix, the injection, the pill, the supplement that you think will just solve all of your issues. Okay, now the final benefit is very interesting as well. And that is that testosterone makes you more 
competitive. Now, again, obviously this is something that could be, you know, uh, a negative effect when you're competitive towards someone and you do anything against all means to win the competition. But of course we are talking about it in the positive light of expansion, of growth, of focused on the forward direction rather than being a loser in life. Okay. So in this study, in one of these studies, what they found is that in uh, they brought in a bunch of subjects and they put them into a rigged one-on-one -on -one competition. Okay. So what they found is that the men who experienced a rise in testosterone after losing the competition, they were more likely to choose to compete again compared to the men that experienced a drop in testosterone levels. Okay. In another study, they brought in a bunch of university tennis players. They took their testosterone levels before and after matches. And what they found is that the university tennis players that experienced a rise after winning their match were more focused, were more determined and were more motivated in their next match after winning the previous match. Okay. This is something that is known in biology as the winner effect. Okay. And it basically was distinguished in rats whereby they bring in two rats. One is stronger. One is weaker. They put them in a competition. The weaker one obviously loses out. Okay. But in a rigged one, they bring in a weaker mouse. They put him against a drug mouse. They let the weaker mouse win. As a result of winning, the weaker mouse experiences a rise in testosterone. Even though he's the exact same animal, his abilities are exactly the same. But when they put him against a stronger mouse again in the next competition, because of the winner effect, because of his testosterone levels being higher, he ends up coming out on top in that competition. Okay, the winner effect takes place in humans as well. And it's basically like stacking wins on top of each other. Okay, you do one thing that's right. You're like, okay, I have the confidence to do the next thing that's right. Then you stack that on top. Then you feel even better. Then you feel better. Then you feel better. And this winner effect just ends up, you know, becoming a way for you to experience that surge in confidence and testosterone and for you to get more focused on what you want to do. Now, this can go the other way as well. There are a lot of media commentators that said that the winner effect is actually responsible for the financial crisis that took place because, you know, there were all these uh, bankers giving out loans, making a lot of money as a result of it. And they just thought they would never collapse, but it got to a point where it was beyond return. Okay. So these are the five ways that testosterone affects your mindset. And if you are experiencing the negatives of any of these, then you have to address the underlying root cause, which might cause you to have low testosterone in the first place. Okay. I've made a bunch of other videos on these topics, so I can link out to them below. I can link out to them up here as well, but I hope you got value from this. And if you learned something new from this video, click a bunch of the buttons below so that you can send the YouTube algorithm some love, and then I can show up on your videos more. If you don't like it, then you can just click the dislike button and leave a comment below letting me know what else you want to see from me, because the topic of this video was actually asked by someone else in the YouTube comment. So I decided to make it over here. Okay. So leave a comment below letting me know your number one takeaway from this video. But with all that being said, this has been Mo and I'll see you in the next video.